Did you read the article? I, I went through the article. I didn't say I read it in detail, but you know. <laughs> okay. Oh, hey, we're live. We're we are live. live. Hey guys, you guys are listening to WGS and to be going solo network. We are a radio, TV, and a podcast company, and we're the number one internet singles talk network. You're listening to the Boy and Girl Thing Show. And I am Cece Schatz, the doyen of relationships. And I have with me my sidekicks and good friends, Kathy Lena. And I'm Derek Bernard. Uh, <laughs> and they're always so shy about saying their names. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're, we're so what are we talking about tonight, guys? Well, Can tonight. Any, any news you want to share before we start in? Well, no news really. I mean, you know, I was quite, um, uh, you know, things have cooled down now, but I was looking at the social scene and the Black Lives Matter stuff and so on. But, you know, um, but things have, have kind of evened out and I think we know the direction people are going in now. So, you know, I, I can, you know, but I, I, I think it's something that we should all be aware of, uh, you know, the changes that are happening in the country and you know, and stuff like that, so. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I know we're going to have a show later on, um, you know, about interracial uh, dating, you know, things like that, uh, which right. I think is very important. But I agree with you. I think there's definitely, there. there's always need for change, and um, I think definitely we need to, to now is yeah. the time. So, yeah. yeah. I totally right. agree. And, and I know that, you know, and the only thing I will say is that I know that, um, you know, they talk about white being privileged, white privilege, you know, you don't, we don't really understand. Um, and I, and I get that. I probably don't understand, don't appreciate what um, people have to go through. And so some of the things that I've heard, you know, are just, just, just terrible. And so I, I do want it to change. So, yeah, you know, I mean, you know. I mean, and I tell you, me, I being a foreigner, um, basically, um, and not having my whole uh, family history and my sociological history and and, and my 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 um, socialization into adulthood in this country, really didn't understand most of the issues um, because I never had to face those issues. And, and, and unfortunately for me, I never had to come face to face with some of the terrible things that that uh, <laughs> that people have been going through. So yeah. I mean, it, it kind of broadsided me because it wasn't my experience. Um, but, you know, you still have to understand people and their pain. And, and you know, and you can feel that pain when you listen to some of them. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think that was very telling. It kind of changed my perspective on a few things. So. Yeah, me too. It, opened, it definitely yeah. opened my eyes to some things and and shocking because, you know, I wasn't raised like that. And so I don't look at things to be, that, you know, my perception of it is that I don't consider it to be different, right? I don't consider because of your color of skin that you're different than me. And so I, when others are thinking that way, it, I'm shocked, you know, because I, I wasn't raised like that and I don't, I don't have that that mindset. I don't think differently. So I think like, well, but yeah, I don't yeah, live yeah. in the world by myself. So I mean, right. you know, I have to understand that there are issues out there. And when I hear some of the stuff and then we see it. Oh, yeah. I'll be glad when we get to the day when we all can get along. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think the young people are going to take us there. Yeah. Um, and I think that we get along all right, but some people still have some deep seated issues. Um, that that as a society we needs to be addressed and, and needs to come to the fore and discussed and get out of the way, you know. And start we definitely people. need to be talked out. That's for sure because everybody needs to see why. Why yeah, are why? we thinking the way we think? And it, yeah. you know, and and come to an understanding and say, oh, okay, I never realized that, you know. And right. You know. Yeah, I mean, it, the way it came from, you know, but. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, do all, that, so. and but and I don't really want to do that because it's not really our platform. But right. I do. 
but I, I think it's important that we recognize. Well, I what just wanted to acknowledge that, you know, and, um, yeah. you know. Yeah, so, I totally agree with that. Yeah. So let's get on with our topic tonight, which is. To how to be single and happy. Being single and happy. Being single and happy. Yes, and oh. this article is by Trudy Griffin, so we want to make sure that we acknowledge the fact that she. Yes. Um, it was a good article, you know, the little bit that I I skimmed through it as quickly as I could, but I got the gist of it, and you right. know how to be happy, you know, after uh, you know when you're single, you know the things that you can do, you know, to keep yourself um, from thinking about the past lover or husband or you know whatever, and. Uh, you know, there's so much that we can do to get that person out of your mind and, you know, make yourself happy and do the things that you want to do to be happy and not have that burden of somebody wasting your brain space. Yeah. Absolutely. You were saying appreciate your freedom to spend the time that you want, how you want. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing I thought she, she said that was kind of funny is, is that single people tend to be thinner than people who are. I know. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm not. I'm, I'm working on looking like a single person, so I have to be thinner. <laughs> well, I'm looking like I'm. Well, well, the thing is, okay, so we're secluded, though. You know, if we could get out there and do stuff, you know. Right. <laughs> I've been so less active, and I've really got to get 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 yeah. with it. But I thought that was funny when I read that. I thought, because I have heard that before. I have heard that study. Yeah, it's, heard that. Well, it's something that is kind the of true. One study found that people gain an average of fourteen or more pounds after starting a relationship. Shoot, man, that would scare you right away from having a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the reason for that could be they're like, okay, now that now that he's gone and found this other woman, I'm going to go and and show him how good I can look. You know, so right, right, and you know, or, yeah, and, and sometimes that's in the back of people's minds. They just want to to show their ex that hey, look what you're missing. Yeah, you know. Or oh, I can look very good and catch someone all day if I want. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's it's a kind of psychological thing. But when you're in a relationship, I guess you're all settled in, and you know, you 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 lose that enthusiasm for your looks, and you feel, oh, I've achieved what I want. You know, which is a good solid relationship. And I think that it's important that whether we are single or or not that we really look at it from a health perspective as well, you know, and, and realize that, hey, you know, I need to keep myself healthy, you know, and being healthy, one of the things of being healthy is being there, that young man behind you there, nice and trim and slim. Yeah, we're talking about you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm working. I got another one around here. He does gain. He does his gaming, right? And he puts it on Twix and stuff. So I told uh -huh. him, "Why don't you give me your games, and we'll put them on our station. We'll play them on our station." So uh, he's really interested in that. But yeah, but going on the diet thing, you know, um, a lot of times when you break up, you know, we call it the divorce diet, the breakup diet. You tend yes. to lose a lot of weight because you are, you know, you're going through a really hard time. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I think you get fat and sassy because you stay home and you don't. When you're in a relationship, you stay home. You're not as active. You're cooking right. more at home, so you're eating more at home. Yeah, yeah. yeah so you're eating. Maybe you're drinking more. You're <laughs> drinking right. more. You're eating more. You your activity level changes. Yeah. You're you doing know. all that. All that all good stuff. stuff. It also said single people. Let's see, single people who get more. A good quality sleep than people who share a bed with a partner. I don't yeah. know about that. I think so. I mean, look. I don't know. I don't sleep very well. You, you don't sleep well? No, I don't. I, oh my gosh. I sleep like a well fed baby. <laughs> <laughs> I get up all hours I move from one bed to the other and, you know, all over the place. I'm up all night, you know, just to, moving around. 
You have to learn how to still your mind. What? You have to learn how to still your mind. Still my mind, okay. Yes. Your your mind is active, but you want to sleep, but your mind is still active. So you have to learn how to I don't to know. Bring I think it's comfort. I just can't still it. You know, I have come to the conclusion if if I'm married again seriously, I want to have a big bedroom with two beds in it. One my wife can sleep in and one I can sleep in. <laughs> for a long time, sweetheart. <laughs> yeah, well, in a way that kind of makes sense, you know, because, yeah. you know, sometimes, I, I don't know, unless you have a really big bed, you know, yeah. king-size bed, you know. A king-size bed, a California king. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I have a big king bed, but, you know, the thing is, is, is like, it's not just the, um, you know, sleeping with somebody, the, you know, their habits or whatever, but also the noise that they make will wake you up if you're like, right. yeah. oh, really? <laughs> Excuse me. And I know, I snore. It's terrible to say that. Yeah. But, you know, I my really and uncle, for years, they slept in separate rooms and, you know, right. they had a good marriage and they just slept in separate rooms. My right. husband used to get up and go into a different room quietly, never said anything, never complained, just, you know, okay? Yeah, you can just, you know, you want to be with yourself. I mean, you know, you, you can, I, you know what, I don't like anybody here resting on me or anything when I'm sleeping. I want to sleep, I want to breathe, I want to feel free in my sleep. Yeah, I like the snuggle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like the snuggle, though. I like, I like the snuggle. Yeah, because, I like because, the snuggle, too. I just I'll spoon. Tell, okay, you walk like the spoon. Send us a message. Oh, here. Derek is right. in right here. Derek, you can send us a message. This isn't the 50s, Derek. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Mark. All right, Mark. Oh, yeah. 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 oh, my God. I guess people are in the 50s. I don't know. But, <laughs> but yeah, but I like that spooning. So, you, anybody that likes a spoon, let me know. Oh, yeah. no. Nice. I wonder if women like spoon more than men. I like the spoon. Yeah. What if they? I think that would make us happy. What's the second thing it said here? The third, I guess. Well, it's a, single it's women a, have better. Okay, get this: single women have better mental health than married women, especially married women who have children. <laughs> yeah. So, what do you think of that? You think we have we have better mental health? Well, well you know, it all depends on the person that you're with. You know, I it, think it, it uh, depends on the person. It depends on the environment they create around them. Yeah. You know. Um, some women are very happy in their marriage and very happy with their children and have a very positive, you know, outlook on, on that whole situation. So and if you then, have somebody that's playing mind games with you all the time, yeah, you're going to be great. Right. Then you have some women who just can't wait to have those children go to school. When they're on vacation, they're going crazy. You mm -hmm. know, why wouldn't school open? Let these children get out of here, you know? So it just depends. But you know, I'm thinking that if you had a partner that really helped you, you know, mm -hmm. do things, do chores, you know, help with the kids, do whatever, and you're and you're both participating in the relationship and you're both participating in raising your family, and then you have this equal equal footing. Uh, but I think a lot of times it's not like that. And and usually right. one party's doing more of the other and and it's not uncommon for women to do most of the housework and you know, also hold down a job, also take care of the children. That's going to create a lot of mental stress. So yeah, right. I totally get that. I get, I get, get that. So I guess we're happier as single women. I think generally people, people who are in, in control of their own lives mm -hmm. tend to be happier. And, and I mean, a married woman is not really in total control of her life. She has to cater. There's so many different things in her life. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, mm -hmm. that might be where the problem comes in. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. You know, it went on with, because Kathy already talked about this one about appreciating the freedom, spend time how you want. You talked a little bit about that at the front, like pamper yourself, give yourself some extra care, set aside some time for, for just yourself, read a book, take a bath, um, you know, those kind of things. So I think we kind of talked yeah. a little bit about that. You do things to make yourself happy to please yourself and, you know, cause mm -hmm. nobody else is around to do it for you anyway. So, 
you know, do things to, uh, you know, don't don't dwell on being the fact that you're alone. You know, mm-hmm. dwell on the fact that, wow, I'm alone. Yay. <laughs> yeah uh that's good yeah i like that idea (laughs) yeah because when you're alone you know when you're single you can balance your life how you want to balance your life right Mm -hmm. without saying well i want to balance my life this way i want to rule this at this point but then i have to wonder if this other person would be able to fit into that particular scheme of things. Um, so when you're single, you're free, ready to to just live how you want. You know, put your life in balance how you want it. When you're with somebody else, you always have to consider the wants and needs of that person. Yeah, you know? but you don't want the person to take away your freedom. You know, you want to be able to. Um, let's see what's word I'm trying to say. You want to be able to blend into their lives and then blend into your lives, but we don't want to take each other's freedoms away. You know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. But then <laughs> that's not often, very often, that's not the reality, right? Very often that's not the reality. Very often um, people, I, I don't want to say come in with their own agendas, but it doesn't always work that smoothly. So that's why single people and that aspect of their life, you know, find it easier to, to manage that aspect of their lives because they don't have to think about that other person who has a fit in into the scenario. And I think it also makes it harder, though, because it, when you are thinking about being with someone, you know, if you've met someone, you are thinking about being with them. You've spent your time making your decisions the way you want to make it, with whatever's good for you. Right. Then you have to start thinking about, is this good for them? And, no, and no, no. love with someone, yeah, loving someone is, is that, giving is, and thinking about the other person. So and that, that is why you have to take it slow, you know, just let them just kind of inch by inch, you know, come into your life a little bit. <laughs> Baby steps is what it takes. <laughs> well, you can, Mark, you know. Mark said here, how's that working out? Are you having a <laughs> Nobody agrees with me. So you just want to give me that time and space. You're right. Right, Mark. I love you, Mark. You're so sweet. <laughs> Mark, Mark was married to a very good friend of mine. We have been like my best friend for years and years and years. A lovely, lovely person, and and she passed. And so Mark is equally as wonderful. So yeah, so oh, it's, that's good. yeah, it's uh, been I think difficult for him because you know they had a really good marriage, you know, and so um, it's been very hard, very hard for him. Yeah. Yeah. Aww. So it's hard to find yourself single. You know, it's not hard to find yourself single and now, you know, living that a different type of life because it is a shift that you have to create. You know? Right. And, and you know, if you have had a good relationship, a solid mm-hmm. relationship, and then that person dies, you're not separated by choice. Mm-hmm. Right, you're separated by circumstance, and that's more difficult. It is, and then you miss that person tremendously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know. It's just you know I don't you know if someone said that a little bit earlier today, and I don't think it's more difficult. I think losing losing a partner in a divorce, you know, a separation like that, is equally mm-hmm. as painful as losing one. It's just different circumstances, you know. Either way, it's a it's a death of a relationship and um, and something we all mourn, and it's it's a hard hard thing. And also that shift of a new life, you know, creating a single life. And I think talking about tonight being happy, creating a because sometimes we're not that happy when we're single because we do want to have that someone in our lives, but we don't want the wrong person, or maybe the timing's not right for us. Maybe we have to learn about ourselves to, to be happy. And and um, someone told me one time, and I do believe this, is that happiness is a choice. And so we can choose to be happy if we so desire. 
And it's the way our outlook, it's the way we look upon things. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Happiness is absolutely a choice and happiness can be cultivated. Mm -hmm. And happiness, if you put effort into being happy, you will be happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. Well, it looks like we have to take a break, you know? It's in time. Yeah, it does. So what we're going to do is let's take a moment of silence here. You guys are listening to WGSN DB Going Solo Network. We're just going to we're on the boy and girl thing, and uh, we're just going to take a couple minutes. Well, not minutes, but just we're just going to, like, count down to five. Uh, and be silent just so that when we're in the radio, um, live streaming radio, they can put the commercials in. So just hang here with us for like five seconds. So, okay, we're back. You guys are listening to WGSN TV Going Solo Network. This is the boy and girl thing. I am CC Schatz. And I am And I am Derek Bernard. And we're talking about being happy, being happy. Let's see. Oh, oh, we've got, let's see, we have a comment here. Yes, but in divorce, you can lose 150 pounds with a bag of travel. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. So, that might be British pounds as well, so. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's, what else does the article say? Let's go on back to our article. Right, so it says, consider the financial benefits of being single. When you are in a relationship, you may have to deal with a spouse who is irresponsible with his or her money. This can cause financial problems for you as well. But when you are single, you don't have to worry about anyone else's spending and saving habits. You can use the money you earn how you want to use it. And then you are your girlfriend. I'm going to spend my money. I'm going to say, hmm, he was right all along. I should be my money. <laughs> you don't have to pay that money, Derek. You spend it right on your girlfriend. Yeah, right, you can do that too. <laughs> <laughs> if you right. like me, you're going to be spending that money. <laughs> you're going to have to, you know. And uh, sometimes you you need that person in your life to help you to manage your money better. <laughs> if, I want, if I want a new dress or a new pair of shoes, by God, I'm going to go get them. And I don't have to explain it to anybody. You know, but, yeah. That's right. That's right. And you should never have to explain that anyway. <laughs> Especially if you're a working person. You want a pair of shoes, you should be free to buy a pair of shoes. You know? Yeah, but, you know, sometimes, you know, having, I don't know how many pairs of black high heels is like, it's, it's like you can't really justify how many <laughs> pairs. <laughs> so, oh, my God. You know, yeah, so, but yeah, it, it, you know, I agree with that. I think that you can, you know, you do have a responsibility to yourself and you can handle your finances how you want. And it's, yeah. you know, no one um, can tell you differently. So, just like you want a car. Kathy, remember when you went out and bought your car? And mm -hmm. that was a financial decision for you. Yeah, it was. Right. I didn't yeah. have to consult anyone. I didn't have to consult anyone, but, you know, I did call people to discuss it just to, you know, make sure that they can, you know, either right. make me feel like my thoughts were right or wrong, you know, and some people right. didn't agree and some people did, and, but I, I weighed it out and, and then made my decision. Right. But your decision Everybody essentially was your decision. Yeah. You know, it wasn't yours and somebody else's decision. That was your decision to make. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference between being single and being married. You know, I remember I used to sell uh, something called a Celerium. It was a home edition that was kind of expensive. So I spoke to this man one day and he said, well, come along, you know, I could make a decision. I said, listen, buddy, this thing is expensive. I need your wife to be there, right? He said, no, I'm the man of the house. I can do what I want. I, you know, I said, okay. I drove from Atlanta to uh, probably Birmingham, Birmingham or somewhere there in Alabama. Got to the guy, had the appointment. We talked. And when he realized it was going to cost him $35,000, then he tells me, listen, you know what? I have to discuss this with my wife. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, 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 I've been in situations where they didn't want to make appointments with me unless my husband was there. And I'm like, no, I make the decision. So, you know, you talk to me or nobody, you know. Right. So, 
Yeah. Then I tried to ask what I thought you were the man in the house. <laughs> What's going on now? <laughs> is that man? Is that like an extra room? Is that an yeah, extra, like, extra room, yeah. like a sunroom type of thing? Yes. Solarium? Yeah. Yeah, so, and it was all made of glass. You yeah. Know? So they're he was big like, over in the UK. They're very yeah. big over in the UK. They're very yeah. nice. Yeah. So, very I mean, nice. and the situation changes. I remember going to another family, and this, they, they were some, they, they planted, they had a plantation of um, peaches, you know, and I went to the house, I made the appointment with the man. No, with the woman. And I swear, you know, your husband got to be there. Well, he came in, he, he looked at both of us. He said, Derek, whatever you all decide is all right with me, I'm going. <laughs> so different couples have different dynamics. Yeah. 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 That's the, of the way it is. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. what's the next thing? It's, uh, the next so one is enjoy the ability to maintain friendships and create new ones. That's important. Uh, that one is important. Mm -hmm. Because I've yeah. seen a lot of couples arguing about friends, um, not understanding why the husband must have this very attractive woman as a friend, or why the wife must have this guy as a friend, right? And there's a kind of suspicion going on, and I see, but if you all trust each other, then what's, you know, you shouldn't have that problem. But people do get jealous because of uh, the friends that their significant other might have. And, and that is something that uh, causes disruptions in a lot of relationships, you know. So it's important. It's an important point. Well, the other thing is um, I know that when I was married, I, before I had a lot of friends, and then when I got married or into relationships, it seems like, the relationship is so, you know, takes over that space and then you lose all of your friends, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, I don't understand really when you're dating, you can keep your friends, but then it seems like when you get further down into this really heavy committed type of relationship, well, now, then you're not supposed to be with your friends anymore. Well, think I, about it. When, you, when your friends, you know, develop a relationship and, and you kind of don't want to be around them because you're, you know, it's too, you know, you're not, you're not the special one anymore. You, you know, it's there, there are significant others that's a special one. And, and so they kind of counted you out after they not really counted you out. They kind of, they're, you're the second best person in their life mm -hmm. rather than the first best person in their life, you know? Mm -hmm. And so you don't feel the same relationship anymore, you know? At least that's the way I feel when my friends, you know, start, you know, dating somebody and, you know, you know, get real close with somebody. I just don't feel like I'm, I'm kind of on the back burner and for a while until, you know, they get. Um, well, I think it's jealousy. I think it's, I think there's a lot of jealousy when, when you're um, when you have a partner and um, they want. I think it's just like, for instance, if it's a, a guy friend. They don't really like that. You know, they feel uncomfortable with that. And and I've had where, you know, my partner would say, well, all men want only one thing. And if he's your friend, that's what he really wants. It's like, well, you know, and I would say, and I would say to that, is that what you really want? Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, you judge people based on your standards. Yeah. Um, that's, that's you know, and I, anytime I have a relationship, if that person can't accept the fact that I lived before, have genuine friendships, have people in my life before you came along, then we can't be together. You know, I never yeah, everybody has a history of people in their lives, and yeah, yeah. And if you're jealous of the person that was there ten years ago, that's you know, that's it. Then we it's have a problem. Crazy. You suddenly have a big, big problem with that one because I am not going to give up my friends, whether male or female, just because you are now in my life. I expect you to get to know my friends. And you can either choose to be friends with them or you can choose not to be friends with them. But understand that if you're in my life, you're in the life of my friends as well. Right. It's as simple as that. 
Yeah, so I mean, I think that um, those are red flags, you know. Oh, yeah. If it, if it and and usually that's an issue to me of control. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're heading and in that direction. The space, the space mm -hmm. of time, right? The space of time. They want your yeah. time, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I totally agree with that. Anything else that they say about savor the less frequent? <laughs> but more enjoyable sex. How about that one? I <laughs> think it's true. Say that when again. When you are in a relationship, you may have sex every day or at least a few times a week. When you are single, your sex life may be much less active uh, than that. But studies have shown that although singles tend to have less sex, they enjoy it more than people who are in a relationship. <laughs> so savor yeah. that. Save I that agree one. with that. Save totally. That one. Huh? <laughs> Save for that moment. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I agree with that because a lot of times it can be a whole lot more passionate than you know than when you're just doing it every day. <laughs> right. Yeah, and you're right. It's less passionate. It, it becomes more routine. It, you know, unless you make a very big effort to make it interesting. Mm -hmm. Right. It becomes routine. It becomes uh, kind of duty like. Mm -hmm. You know. And um, and that to me is a, is what makes it a little less interesting than when you're single because when you have sex with that person, hey, you want to make it a memorable occasion, right? Um, especially if it's not you know, and any single probably might be seeing a new person, right? And 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 that now is it gives a fresh um, level of arousal and so on. That you just, it's just more interesting. That's where all these different wigs can come in handy, you know? Right. Wait, what? <laughs> you want me to be tonight? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I just think it's a fact that it's true, but people don't like to face. Okay, we had a comment here. It says, it's like when something is limited, time only, it creates a rush. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that is true. Yeah. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I don't know. I think what? that even though you um, I, know. <laughs> I think it should be more often. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you're single, right? <laughs> That's right. And just because you're single doesn't mean it should be like once in a blue moon. <laughs> oh, no. it, it just depends on how active your life is. Um, you know, some single people have more sex than married people because they're out there <laughs> and they're looking for it and they're open to it. You know. Well, the other thing is too is they maybe they appreciate it, right? They, yeah. they appreciate the the finer moments in life and uh, doing they, the right things. Or <laughs> oh yeah. You know? oh, well, and it's also like you said, you know, it's like the, not an old hat, you know, it's something new and and it's exciting and you know whatever. So oh, yeah. Thing, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I, I know Kathy when Kathy got into that new car, it was exciting. much more exciting than driving the old car. Yeah, it's still exciting. Right, you know. Moving around, <laughs> around the place. You know. You're touching the leather and you know. Yeah. That's right. I but at some point you're gonna come very accustomed to it and say, you know, it's a car. Time for a new one again. <laughs> a little joys in our life, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's so right. it's kind of like, you know, too much of a good thing kind of gets worn out. And so yeah, that's like sort of uh, Kind of like uh, hold it off for a while, once in a while. Well, you know, here's the thing. What I was just thinking was that about sex is that the thing, there's a difference between sex, having sex, and romance, right? Right. And I think with, when you're single, you tend to have more romance because you're being wooed. Yeah, right? that's what it and is. So it makes it a lot more, you know, fun and exciting and you know, you just enjoy it more than I think when you're, you know, every day it's like, yeah. hey, 
Isn't it Thursday at eight o'clock? Are we supposed to be? Take <laughs> 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 the old car. What's so great about the old car? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Randy. I keep taking over the board. I keep, I told him to go ahead and do the board, and then I take over the board. And you take it away. Yeah. No, but I I think the romance and the booing and all of that. I think that is a benefit of a perk of being single. Yeah. I think that's oh, yeah. the romance definitely uh, keeps it alive. I think, especially mm -hmm. when you've got a good imagination. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So, and I think if you're together, you know, if you've been together for a long time, if you could do these date nights and things like that. I know my son does that with his uh, with his wife, and they go away for the weekend. You know, and they do things like that. I think that's very important. It's very, very, very important to do that. So yeah. So, um, but as single people, we can do that too. Go away for the weekend. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So all you need is that number. Let me give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, so okay let's put this one is know know that you have the ability to seek out relationship romantic relationships if you want yeah so that's what we're talking about so yeah. so we can seek them out so if you're stuck in a relationship like the old car <laughs> if you're stuck <laughs> there, you're, uh, you you know you you've got to somehow figure out how to uh to to brush up that interior or whatever. Right, you know. The old guy, you gotta you gotta spend spend some time and some quality time and really fix it up and make it interesting again. Yeah. You know? That's um, right. But if you don't have that old car, you can always say, hey, I get a new one. You, you can't know? take advantage of it. You gotta you gotta treat it right. You gotta mm -hmm. treat it right, you know. But you know, you get a new one. The whole joy of looking for it, of, 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 of actually going and take a test drive and see how it feels, see how it accelerates, how it stops. You know, it, you romance the car just as how you romance a new relationship, and uh, you know, and you are now discovering it. The, 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 the whole, the whole activity of discovery. Is exciting, <laughs> right? Yeah, it, yeah, it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going car shopping. <laughs> and you definitely got to change that oil once in a while. You got to change that oil, right? <laughs> so it's you know, so I mean you know it's um, but but when you're single, you have that choice to either go buy a new car. Or, or keep the one you know, or not. You might just, I don't know, know, just be use public transport. You know what I mean? Yeah. I I feel feel the animal instinct in us. Yeah. Right? Bring bring back it brings back the animal instinct boxes. Yes, I am. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I am. Isn't it funny how the men are interested when we analyze it with cars? I know. Yeah. You guys can relate to that. They can relate to cars. You, know, you can relate to a car. You know how that is. That's right. <laughs> how about okay. what about seeing happy couples on media? How do being a single person? How do you feel about that? Seeing seeing happy couples on the Facebook and doing this and they're doing that and. So yeah, I, it kind of makes me sad, you know, that kind of brings out the thoughts of loneliness when I see that kind of thing, because, you know, you, you, you had it, you miss it, and and um, you, you'd like to have it back again. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, and then yeah. I, I'd rather send, see them fighting, I guess. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, I, you know, those images don't have any real effect on me. Um, you know, I'm, just happy. I'm happy for them. Yeah, happy I, for them. I, Lucky I, them. I would love to be there myself, and so it makes me sad. Yeah, yeah. It makes yeah. Me sad. and then well, I think well, I'll see them in my divorce support group in five years. <laughs> well, sometimes I look at them and say, hey, the, the car, the wife, the picket, the white picket fence, the three and a half kids, or whatever. What a boring, flipping life. <laughs> you know? 
I'm I generally am. There are so many different aspects to life. Mm-hmm. That's just one aspect, and it's the one that has been sold and, and idealized. You know, okay. but that, here's the thing. I think you're getting to something. The perfect right to everyone. I think you're getting to something because everything that you see on Facebook is not how it always is behind the scenes. And no. So there could be a cherished moment. There could be something really wonderful, but maybe it could be more to it than that. And so oh, yeah. you never know, you know, never know what's going to happen. You know, guys, it's getting down to the end of our show here. It so is. is there any last words that you guys want to say? Well, about anything? Ahead. About being yeah. happy, being single? Well, yeah. let's just you know <laughs> concentrate on on not being unhappy and single, and, and do something that makes us happy. Whatever, whatever it is that makes you happy, just do it. Well, I would say whatever circumstance you are in, whether you are single or whether you uh, you know in a relationship, is to look on the positive. You know. Look on the positive side of, of life. Look for the positive aspects of your circumstances and concentrate on the positivity. Um, in every circumstance, in every situation, there's going to be a negative aspect and a positive aspect. In life, to be happy, we have to concentrate on the positive. Mm-hmm. That's right. Very right. And then the only thing I would say, because I think Derek said it very well and Kathy too, is that, you know, you know, being happy is an eternal, you know, it's, it's really internal and yes. it's your choice, you know? And so you can choose how you want to feel. And um, that's, that's something that's up to us. And so if we want to wake up in the morning and say, we're going to have a great day, um, there might be things that might come along the way that could change that for us. But, our mindset is at least positive and we're ready to go forward. We're choosing to be happy. And so, yes. yeah, I think that that's very important. So I, I again, I think that um, is it, is it, over, you know, being single, being married, which is whoever is happiest. I don't think that matters. I think it's an internal feeling. It's one that we can choose. And so I hope that you all and everyone out there chooses to be happy and, uh, catches us next time around. So we'll be right back here at the same time. Well, actually we're doing a bi-weekly show. We're sharing uh, the platform. Uh, Boy and girl thing is sharing it with the chicks passion. And mm-hmm. uh, so next week it'll be the chicks passions, which will be on. And then the week after that, we'll be back with the boy and girl thing. So anything you guys want to listen to, or you want to hear or a particular topic you'd like to cover, just email us at going solo network at gmail.com. And, of course, you know that we're on WGSN DB Going Solo Network. Our website is goingsolomedia.com. All our shows are there. You'll find us on Facebook and on YouTube. And I hope that you'll listen to all of the shows, including ours, and any rebroadcast. We would love that. So thank you again. Derek, it's nice to see you. I'm glad you're back in um, in the screen again. Yeah. And thank you. Thank you. Uh, nice missed- being here. Yeah, we missed you. And uh, oh. Kathy, I'll see you next week then. Okay. okay. All I'll right. See you Thank guys you. Next two weeks. Okay. Bye. Bye, Mark. It was nice having you. Bye. Nice seeing you, Mark. Bye. Good night, Bye. everyone. Good night. Good night.